Hello and welcome to the Photography and Videography channel. I'm Nigel Cooper and today I'm taking a look at the Hasselblad X1D2 50C, which is Hasselblad's medium format mirrorless offering. Unlike the single lens reflex H system, which was first released in late 2002, Hasselblad's mirrorless X system is relatively new. The first generation XD1 was launched in 2016, while the much improved XD2 that I have here replaced the original version in June 2019. The Hasselblad lens designers also got to work designing an entirely new range of lenses for this all new mirrorless medium format system. I've had this camera along with three Hasselblad Prime lenses on loan for about 10 days now, so I thought I'd make this video to evaluate the camera and give you my general feedback on the SD12 mirrorless system, which so far has really impressed. Although I don't currently own a medium format camera, I'm a huge fan of them, so I was thrilled to be given the opportunity to use this X1D 250C for 10 days. When I first started out in photography, I actually owned a Hasselblad 500cm medium format film camera with various Carl's Haas lenses. I also owned a Mamiya AZ67 Pro 2 medium format camera, and back then, my 35mm camera system of choice was based around Nikon F3 and Nikon FA bodies with various Nikon lenses. Since the digital era, I've owned Canon EOS 5D Mark III and IV cameras, a Nikon Z7 and Sony a7 III full frame digital systems for stills photography and a Panasonic GH5 for the purposes of creating YouTube videos such as this one. So having owned and used both 35mm and medium format film formats in the past and modern full frame digital cameras, I think I'm in a pretty good position to talk about Hasselblad's medium format mirrorless offering. So what exactly is Hasselblad's X1D 250C? Well, it's Hasselblad's relatively recent medium format mirrorless camera system that sports a larger sensor that comes in at 1.66 times larger than the sensors found in full frame digital cameras. To give you an idea of the size, here's a diagram that I put together in Photoshop. This compares Micro Four Third, APS-C, full frame, and of course the Hasselblad X1D2 50C medium format sensor. As you can see, the sensor in the X1D is much larger than even those found in full frame DSLR and mirrorless cameras. This larger sensor has many benefits, including better dynamic range, smoother tones, richer and more natural colors, better low light shooting capabilities, and of course, resolution, detail, and sharpness. The sensor found in the Hasselblad X1D 250C is a 50 megapixel CMOS sensor that's actually made by Sony. And it's the same sensor that's used in Hasselblad's H6050 single lens reflex medium format camera, as well as Fuji's GFX50S. However, this doesn't mean that the results from the Hasselblad and Fuji cameras will be identical. The reason for this is down to what the given camera manufacturers do with the sensor, the science, and the way they use their clever trickery to get the very best out of it. And of course, the lenses. It's important to remember that companies such as Hasselblad or Fuji take delivery of these sensors from a company such as Sony and when they do they're actually black and white and if used straight out of the packaging the images wouldn't actually be that great. This applies to any sensor made by any company. These blank sensors are delivered to the camera makers as a kind of black and white device. It's then down to the camera manufacturer and their scientific expertise to make the sensor colour and more importantly make those colours as accurate and natural as possible while also getting the most detailed and cleanest images out of it, of course. This is where Hasselblad excel. Trust me on this one. The scientific guys who do the sensor work over in Sweden are nothing less than geniuses. They put in so much time, effort and money into this area, which is how they're able to achieve the best color accuracy in any camera available today. Now you might be thinking 50 megapixels isn't mind blowing for a medium format camera. After all, Nikon's D850 and Z7 and Canon's R5 all have a tad over 45 megapixels. So R5 megapixels more on the Hasselblad really going to make that much difference? The simple answer is yes, a massive one actually. And here's why. The sensor in the X1D 250C is much larger than sensors found in full frame cameras, which means the individual pixels are larger too. 5.3 microns to be exact compared to the smaller 4.35 microns in say Nikon's 45.7 megapixel D850. These larger pixels yield a greater dynamic range, smoother tones as they transition from light to dark, richer colors, 
and superior saturation that are more natural with superior low light shooting capabilities. And let's not forget sharpness, detail and resolution. And anybody who's ever compared 35mm film to medium format film will know that medium format images just have something of a wow factor that you simply don't get with smaller formats. Personally, I've never been a fan of full frame cameras that try to cram too many pixels onto the sensor, such as 45 or 50 megapixels for example, as this usually has a negative effect on dynamic range and colour rendition, and it's a trade-off that I don't buy into as I consider dynamic range and colour rendition to be more important picture making qualities than resolution alone. I prefer a full frame camera to have around 25 megapixels at the most because although you might lose a trifle of resolution, and I do mean a trifle, you gain more dynamic range, smoother tones, nicer colours and better low light shooting capabilities, all of which are more important than a little extra resolution, which is typically only noticeable when zoomed in and pixel peeping in Photoshop. And viewing poster sized gallery quality prints hanging on a wall at regular gallery viewing distances, an image blown up from a 24 megapixel full frame camera will generally look nicer than one blown up from a 45 megapixel full frame camera regarding tonal range and colours. With the Hasselblad S1D2 you get it all, loads of resolution from the 50 megapixel CMOS sensor while retaining a massive 14 stops of dynamic range, smoother tonal transitions, superior colour reproduction and far better low light shooting capabilities, all because those 50 megapixels are larger and spread out across a much larger sensor that measures 43.8 by 32.9 millimetres compared to 36 by 24 found in full frame cameras. Just for the record, the ratio of the images produced by this X1D2 are 4 to 3 compared to the 3 to 2 ratio found on full frame cameras. So instead of working with 3 to 2 picture sizes of 6 by 4, 8 by 12, 12 by 18 and 24 by 36 inches, you'll be working with print sizes of 6 by 8, 10 by 8, 12 by 16 and 24 by 32 for example. This is just a small thing but worth a mention nonetheless. So how much does the X1D2 cost? A quick check on the Wix Photographic website shows a current price of 5399 for the body only. The cost of the Hasselblad lenses range from just over £1000 to just under £5000. A trio of prime lenses such as a 30mm f3.5, a 65mm f2.8 and a 135mm f2.8 will come in at around £9,500 for the free. Add the price of the XD12 to that and you'll be looking at around £15,000 in total. But when you go out and start shooting with it you'll know exactly where that money went as the quality of files that this camera produces are nothing less than spectacular. The resolution, detail, sharpness, tonal range and beautifully natural colours all add up to incredible images that are to die for. When comparing the files I got from the XD12 to the best mirrorless full frame offerings I've tried, namely the Nikon Z7 and Sony a7 III, the Hasselblad simply elevates everything to a whole new level. The difference is obvious and you don't have to zoom in and pixel peep to see the difference either. The look and feel you get from the Hasselblad medium format sensor has something extra special, a certain je ne sais quoi that you just don't get from full frame sensors. So is the X1D2 worth it? Absolutely, especially when you consider that when Hasselblad launched the first generation X1D, it was priced at just under £10,000, but when Hasselblad released the updated and much improved X1D2 that I have here, they actually slashed about £4,000 off the original price to be more competitive with Fuji's GFX 50S. Although the Hasselblad and Fuji share the same Sony made 50 megapixel sensor, the Hasselblad wins all day long for me for a whole plethora of different reasons. Yes, these two cameras may share the same sensor and given that the Hasselblad and Fuji medium format mirrorless lenses are pretty much on a par regarding edge to edge sharpness, the build quality of the Hasselblad is just so much better. I recently watched a YouTube video of one chap showing off his broken GFX 50S where part of the bottom plate had snapped off and remained stuck to his tripod. It would appear that the base plate on the Fuji is made out of some sort of cheap cast metal or combination of metals, either way. Cast in metal as opposed to milling it is never a good idea, not if you want strength and durability at least, as the process of melting metal down into a cast and pouring it into a mould yields air pockets and a brittle final product that can crack and break instead of denting or bending. Fuji have obviously gone with the cast metal manufacturing process to cut costs and make things a little easier on the production line, 
whereas Hasselblad have done things properly. Hasselblad have built their camera to the very highest standards and tolerances, much of it by hand, and then worked out the cost and retail price later. And when shooting with the X1D2, the build quality really comes into its own and it inspires confidence, no matter how harsh the shooting environment. In terms of build quality, the XD12 is about as good as it gets, nothing less than I would expect from a company like Hasselblad. The camera appears to be made out of a solid piece of milled aluminium alloy, which feels solid, heavy and substantial. Being medium format means the X1D2 is larger than your standard full frame mirrorless camera, as you can see when I put it side by side with this full frame Sony a7 III. I actually prefer this larger size of the Hasselblad, as there's more to hold onto, especially with the large built-in grip. In terms of layout and design, the X1D2 is by far the cleanest camera I've ever used. The switches and dials are minimal, but this doesn't mean the camera is heavily menu driven because it isn't. All the buttons and dials that you need are all there and all in the right places, and the ones you don't are not. There's an aperture dial at the front of the grip, just in front of Hasselblad's distinguished orange shutter button, and the top there are buttons for AF-MF and ISOWB, a chunky mode dial and of course the power on button. The back of the camera spots a nice large 3.6 inch screen that's made up of 2.36 million dots in 24 bit colour, which is larger than the first generation X1D. Then there's a shutter speed dial, AE lock and AFD buttons, and a further 5 buttons down the side of the screen for navigating the menus. Finally, there's the diopta dial to the side of the EVF. With an equally well built Hasselblad lens attached, it certainly feels like you're holding something quite special. I tried the Hasselblad out during an outdoor portrait shoot with a friend, as well as a trip to Ely Cathedral and a visit to the local Bentley dealership, and I loved the way the camera handled. It's just so comfortable in the hand. Admittedly, the focus is a little laboured, especially when compared to modern full frame mirrorless offerings, but given that this camera is medium format and it has a huge 43.8 by 32.9 50 megapixel sensor, it was never going to be lightning fast in the focusing department. The same goes for the shooting rate. The X1D2 manages just 2.7 frames per second, but this isn't a tool for sports photographers or photojournalists looking to establish themselves as members of the Bang Bang Club. Mind you, even those war photojournalists manage just fine with 35mm Nikon FE2 film cameras running around grabbing action shots while watching the aperture. I'm sure the X1D2 would have been considered a much faster camera to work with for even those guys. Having said that, by today's standards, many photographers might argue that the X1D2 is more at home in the hands of a landscape or portrait photographer or in the studio. I personally think the X1D2 has more scope than that, and I'd definitely go as far as saying that shooting weddings with the Hasselblad would be a fairly straightforward affair. Sure, 2.7 frames per second might not be the fastest around, but how fast does a bride walk down the aisle anyway? A bride can hardly be compared to Usain Bolt metres away from the finish line, where 10 frames per second might actually come in handy. When it comes to the autofocus speed on the XD12, that's also a trifle pedestrian when compared to the latest full frame offerings, but wedding photographers never had an issue with a 500cm film camera with manual focus calzice lenses and manual film wind on and no built in exposure meter, meaning they had to pull out a Minolta light meter and walk up to the bride to take a reading before each new shot. Compared to those days, the X1D2 is blisteringly fast. It depends on how you look at it, so don't get too hung up on the speed specs that manufacturers bullet point. I personally think a slightly laboured focusing and slower frames per second makes you a more considered photographer, which can only be a good thing. Now here's an interesting bit. The X1D 250C, which costs £5,399, actually produces slightly better images than Hasselblad's larger H6D 50C single lens reflex camera, which costs around £14,000. This shouldn't be the case as both share the same 50 megapixel CMOS sensor. So how come the X1D2 produces slightly better images and the emphasis being on the word slightly? Well, it's actually got nothing to do with the camera body or the sensor, it's down to the lenses. The H-series lenses designed for the H-series single lens reflex medium format Hasselblad cameras are different to the X-series of lenses designed for the X-series camera. The H1, Hasselblad's first H-series digital medium format camera, came out back in 2002 and the H-series lenses were designed around the same time and are, thus, about 20 years old in design. Now don't get me wrong, compared to the Carl Zeiss lenses from the 70s and 80s, these new H-series Hasselblad lenses are far superior. 
but Hasselblad's X-Series mirrorless system was only launched in 2016 and the newer X-Series of lenses to accompany this all new mirrorless medium format system were designed at the same time, so they're only five years old in design. We all know that science in optical design is different between DSLR cameras compared to mirrorless cameras, so the Hasselblad lens design team started over with the X system and compared to the H series of lenses, they prevailed. This difference in optical performance is only small, minuscule in fact, but with certain shots within certain parts of the image, the improved optical design of the X series lenses can be seen if you have a keen eye. While I'm on the subject of lenses, the XCD lenses designed for the X1D2 have leaf shutters built into them. Unlike a traditional shutter curtain on a full frame DSLR or mirrorless camera, you can sync the flash up to shutter speeds of 1 2000th of a second with none of the issues you might get while trying to shoot at say 1 250th of a second with a shutter curtain on a full frame camera, where you'd probably get that horrible black band encroaching across the image and the faster the shutter speed, the more that black band comes into play. This issue doesn't exist with the Hasselblad systems due to the leaf shutter being built into the lenses right next to the aperture blades. This leaf shutter opens and closes in the same manner as the aperture blades. As an aside, the Fuji medium format cameras don't have leaf shutters in their lenses. They use a traditional focal plane shutter so that the flash will sink at a somewhat slower and more limiting 1 25th of a second. Now it might seem like I'm having a bit of a dig at Fuji, but I'm not. I'm simply mentioning little differences where necessary, as I'm sure people looking to get into a digital medium format system will be looking at the Fuji offerings too. It's subjective of course, but for me, the Hasselblad comes out on top for the reasons I've already outlined. When it comes to software, Hasselblad have various offerings to accompany the X1D2. For the iPhone and iPad, there's Focus and Focus 2 mobile applications, the latter allows you to control the camera remotely with the ability to adjust the exposure, focus, change ISO, shutter speed and aperture, and take photos and save them to either the SD cards in the camera or to the iPad's internal SSD. Then there's the regular desktop post-processing software, Focus. Focus is spelled P-H-O-C-U-S incidentally. The X1D2 has two SD cards that accept UHS-2 cards which pleases me. I'm really glad that Hasselblad didn't go for an expensive card system such as CF Express. SD cards are more than capable of receiving the raw .3FR files that the 50 megapixel sensor throws at them that come in on average at around 75 to 85 megabytes each when shooting in raw. Given that the X1D2 shoots at a maximum of 2.7 frames per second, it's going to be next door to impossible to get the buffer to max out during burst shooting situations and given the average 80 megabyte file of each shot, achieving between 1200 and 1400 raw images over two 64 gigabyte SD cards in camera shouldn't propose a problem. And with 64 gigabyte cards costing around 20 pound each, it's going to be a pretty cheap option too. As far as the socketry goes, the X1D2 has sockets for microphone and headphones for video purposes and a USB 3 type C socket for tethering. With regard to video, the X1D2 has a maximum resolution of 2.7K at 30p in 420 8-bit colour space, but don't let this bother you as a large medium format sensor coupled with the pin sharp Hasselblad lenses produce beautiful looking video, and you can always upscale to 4K in post if you want. Having said that, there's no doubt that the X1D2 is built for stills photography and boy does it do it well. During my time with this camera, it's produced some of the nicest files I've ever seen, way surpassing anything that I've ever managed to squeeze out of my Canon EOS 5D Mark IV, Nikon Z7, or more recently, my Sony a7 III. To be honest, if you shoot a lot of video, you might want to consider buying a separate camera solely for video purposes anyway. A used Panasonic GH5 can be had on eBay for around £850, a Sony a6 00 even less. This will leave you to enjoy shooting glorious medium format still images on the Hasselblad. Next we come to the Hasselblad Focus software for desktop and laptop computers. Focus is Hasselblad's equivalent to Lightroom or Capture One Pro, and having used Focus for a few months now, I can report that it's a pretty decent piece of software. Personally, I'm a Capture One Pro 20 user, and I feel that Capture One has more features, features that I use all the time and features that Focus doesn't have. If you use Focus, you'll probably end up doing some round tripping into Photoshop for more detailed edits such as masking, cloning and skin detail. 
Also, it's worth mentioning that Capture One Pro 20 doesn't work with native raw Hasselblad .3FR files due to some silly politics between the Capture One owners, Phase One, and Hasselblad. It's a silly situation that I fear will not get resolved anytime soon, if ever, and it's the poor photographer who ends up suffering. I think this is all rather silly because if Capture One Pro did support Hasselblad RAW files, they would probably gain a load of sales from Hasselblad users for their software anyway. One workaround if you're a Capture One Pro user like me is to use Focus as a RAW converter only, carrying out just the basic edits for colour temperature and exposure for example, then save the file out as a 16-bit TIFF and then edit that in Capture One Pro or Photoshop for masks, skin detailing duties, cloning and other more complex edits. At the end of the day, a 16-bit TIFF file has a ton of scope and latitude for post-processing work. Not quite as much as a RAW file, but pretty close. You can do an abundance of colour grading with a TIFF file, so don't get too hung up on the RAW workflow. I actually know a Hasselblad ambassador who uses this very workflow, using Focus for just the basic edits before jumping into Photoshop with an exported 16-bit TIFF file for the rest of his post-processing duties before doing a final export. Anyway, even with the aforementioned gripes about the Focus software, the X1D2 is, at the time of making this video, my favourite camera in the world right now, and if I had the money, I'd go out and buy one tomorrow. At around £5,399 for the body, and another £3,700 for, say, a 135mm f2.8 lens, just under two and a half grand for a 65mm f2.8 lens, I'd consider this camera and these two lenses to be worth absolutely every penny, given the incredible files that this camera produces. Remember, all this is just my own personal evaluation of the Hasselblad X1D 250C and accompanying focused desktop software, but after using the camera for 10 days and spending several weeks editing images in focus, I totally love the Hasselblad H and X camera systems, but especially this X1D2 mirrorless version. And there are plenty of easy post-production workflows available if you're a Capture One user. On the other hand, Focus might do everything you need for editing and tethering purposes, and Hasselblad's native RAW files work natively in Lightroom, and you can even tether into Lightroom too, if that's your editing software of choice. As usual, I hope you found this video informative. Give it a thumbs up if you did, and if you haven't already subscribed to my channel, be sure to click on the subscribe button as I'm always uploading new video content that's relevant to both stills photography and video production. I'm Nigel Cooper and this is the Photography and Videography channel. Thanks for stopping by and I hope to see you again real soon.